Hi everyone, now I'm going to talk about how we are going to analyze your data in SPSS. So SPSS has two windows, one is the data editor window and the other one is the statistical viewer window. In the data editor window, you have the variable view and the data view. So you go to the data view first and then copy the data from your Excel sheet or your Google sheet in this case. And then you paste them into your data view. So once you paste them, they'll all come with two decimal points. So you first go and nullify all the decimals into zero. That's the fourth column which I'm doing now. Once you're done with that, you go and uh, check back with your sheet and name each variable. Like the first one was the department column, the second qualification, and then uh, comes the age, sex, and all those things of the respondent. So now we have to start uh, categorizing the measures. Uh, if the parameters are independent, you call them as uh, nominal variables like uh, sex. You can't take the average of male and female. It's, any, it's a completely different options, whatever they offer. Whereas if it is a sequential parameter, like say for example, good, better, best, it's in an orderly fashion. So such uh, data you put in ordinal. If you have collected age as a separate variable, you just directly put as a scale. So in this case, we have age is the only scale variable and everything else we have put in uh, ranks of 1 to 5. So all ranking variables go under ordinal. Now what we need to do is go to uh, each column, to the values column and start entering the values. What does 1 mean? What does 2 mean? Remember we did converted in Google Sheets from all the responses into 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Uh, now we need to tell this software what 5 means, what 4 means, 3, 2, 1 means. This is a very, very important step. If you don't do this, uh, you will not get good outputs at all. So remember the values column and you have to enter all this. So now that we are done with the uh, uh, defining the variables and creating proper nomenclature, we go to the output window and we go to chart builder and we are beginning to build some charts. So the best thing about SPSS is you can start comparing multiple parameters. So for example, work from home difficulty, we can see across the departments. Uh, public health industry feels it's easy to do the work from home work whereas uh, other departments like uh, Prosto and Ortho have said that it's very difficult but uh, in Prosto some have felt it's extremely easy either. So these kinds of trends you can analyze and talk about in a discussion saying that this is how the trend is etc. So the next graph we see here is work from home difficulty again it's among uh, uh, the earning of the faculty, faculty who earn less are actually finding the work to be much more difficult. So you go into chart, then you select your chart, then you drag your variable and you put it in. Here you can see that once you put it, it takes mean as age. So this would be a problem. So you'll need to go to the site tab and change mean into values. So only then you will get the count. Otherwise you will get uh, arbitrary this thing. So remember the kind of statistics that's there. So the next thing is that uh, you can look, we try to see uh, work from home difficulty among professors and uh, lecturers, etc, etc. So generally it was very surprising to see that uh, professors do not find it to be that difficult and only lecturers are finding it to be difficult. Um, I do not have an explanation for this, but it's an interesting note. Probably the lecturers are having more uh, uh, classes or uh, something like that. We need to look at that. Maybe that is the reason. All these things, if you are doing a research, you need to analyze and say why the parameter has changed the way it is. Now we are looking at uh, the difficulty of presenting reports. That is every evening we make reports. And in that also, uh, we are getting mixed uh, replies with the uh, 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 senior faculty giving relatively uh, easier responses. They find it to be easy. I did not expect that to be the case. So in the final segment I'm going to show you how we are going to analyze data from the dais. Here too you copy your data from an Excel and paste it here. Here all the three variables are scale variables because true measures. So the first one is abrasion, percentage, second is abrasion and then age. For scale variables, you don't need to define any values like we did before. So all three are scale. Now you go to analyze. 
and correlate bivariate select all the parameters you are putting age and abrasion percentage uh, we are just putting mean and standard deviation and now you got the graph so here you can see minus 1.104 uh, is a negative correlation it is not significant because it has to be greater than 0.5 to be of significance uh, the same correlation you can also mark a graph so i put a line graph and after selecting that now i am putting age in one axis and then i am putting uh, abrasion percentage in the other axis so now we get this output so one thing you'll wonder is usually you'll expect abrasion to increase with age and we didn't find any uh, correlation in our research so it's probably because in this case you can see that from 20 years to 40 years there is a progressive increase in number of attrition but after that there is a dip it's possibly because after that there's a lot of tooth loss and that's why we are not seeing the abrasion so that is why the overall results have come down so now if you go to and filter it to only patients between 20 to 40 you would probably find a much more stronger correlation so when you can take a graph like this copy then paste in your uh, word document and proceed with your research thank you